Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Geezerology. Today, we're going to do one in our series called New Music from Old Friends. Uh, the album that uh, Bob and Dee are going to talk about today, it's actually not new music. Uh, this is the album that was just released on May 20th called Carry Me Home. That was uh, released by Mavis Staples, and it was from a performance that Mavis Staples did with uh, Levon Helm in the summer of 2011. And now Mavis has, has uh, released this stuff in this album called Carry Me Home. Uh, Bob, take it away. Tell us about this thing. All right. Uh, thank you, Scotty. So Mavis Staples um, is, was a member of the famous Staples Singers family. And, you know, they were legendary in the, on the gospel and rhythm, rhythm and blues circuit. And Mavis Staples' connection to Levon Helm, who was a member of the band, dates back to 1976 when the Staples singers performed uh, for the last Waltz movie and did uh, The Wait, which they had recorded on one of their albums. So fast forward to 2011. And now we're in the last year of Levon Helm's life. And the latter part of his life, he was troubled with a long-term bout of throat cancer. And in fact, it kept him from performing for about five years because he couldn't sing. And when he finally recovered his voice, he wound up building a barn theater slash studio at his home in Woodstock, New York and actually got the help of former bandmate Garth Hudson when they put this thing up. And it was billed as something, a, a thing that was sonically very, uh, a great place to perform sonically and also an intimate setting for musicians to perform. And I think it seats about 200 people. And so Helm would host shows there that he called the Midnight Ramble. And these were based on tent shows that Levon Helm remembered seeing as a kid growing up in rural Arkansas. And these tent shows would come into these small towns and they would do kind of like a G-rated performance. And then they would have a late night show that they called the Midnight Ramble. You know, when the songs got a little more risque, the jokes got a little bit more risque and the dancers were revealing a little bit more. So when Helm started putting these shows together, he called them the Midnight Rambles based on that memory of being a youth. So summer of 2011, Mavis Staples comes to uh, LeVon Helm's um, barn studio. She brings her band with her. She joins Le LeVon Helm and his band. So you've got something like 15 musicians on stage performing live, you know, there at, at uh, Helm's Barn. I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. I wish I could break all the chains holding me. And I wish I could say all the things that I should say. Say it loud, say it clear for the whole round world to hear. We... And so you've got a stellar group of musicians on stage, including a horn section. And this is billed as a Mavis Staples Levon Helm album, but it's really Mavis Staples. Helms only sings on one track, and he comes in on the closer, which is the weight, you know, the classic band song. He does perform drums, you know, throughout it, but he he does not, he's not the principal vocalist. This is Mav Mavis Staples taking the stage and dominating with that commanding church-born voice, you know, that she has. I love this. This is such a delight and a pleasure to listen to. It is just a marvelous, marvelous performance. I, I'm, I'm absolutely in love with this thing. And um, there's 12 songs on here. Most of them are gospel oriented because you know the staple singers were primarily a gospel group. Uh, they started performing in churches when the, when the staple kids were young back in the late 1940s. 
And then they later on, they branched out and did, you know, some secular R&B stuff. But at the heart, they were a gospel group. And there are most of the tunes on here are gospel standards. It's just marvelous performances. Um, the song opens with a cover of the old Curtis Mayfield protest song, This Is My Country. And the song bemoans the fact that a lot of people in this country don't actually believe that African Americans are part of this country. And sadly, this song, which was written back in the 60s, was relevant in 2011 because it mentions in there about disrespecting our president. So Barack Obama was two years into his first term, you know, when um, he's already facing the racist birther stuff. And sadly, over a decade later, that song still is relevant. The song ends with, um, you got some folks throwing a party, but nobody invited me. They're mixing up the Kool-Aid, but passing it off as tea. I hear a lot of people say they want to take their country back. Don't sound like progress to me. So, you know, in the 1960s, we were dealing with this. 11 years ago when this was recorded, we were dealing with it. And now here we are, you know, in 2022 with the exact same thing going on. You know, we need to take back our country. So that was really sad to know that, you know, nothing has changed in there. Um, there is a beautiful mix of rhythm and blues, soul uh, blues in here. Like I said earlier, with the stellar band backing them up. Um, Mavis does two staple singer, sing, um, staple singers standards, uh, both written by her father, Pop Staples. Um, this may be the last time, which interestingly was also covered by the Rolling Stones and then Move Along Train. She does another biting protest song called I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel to Be Free, which had also been covered by Nina Simone. Uh, she does a fantastic version of Bob Dylan's You Got to Serve Somebody. Um, they close the album with The Weight and LaVon Helm, you know, takes vocal duty starting out The Weight. And then um, uh, Mavis Staples brings it home. Uh, she does several classic um, gospel tunes, Trouble in My Mind, Farther Along, Handwriting on the Wall, um, When I Go Away, Wide River to Cross, uh, You Got to Move. And um, so I just absolutely enjoyed this to no end. And um, Mavis Staples has got a dynamite voice. She puts tremendous emotion uh, into these songs and um, just joyous music. And like I say, don't let the gospel um, tinges on this turn you off. It's still fantastic music. And, she, and Mavis Staples just blows this thing out of the water. So uh, can't recommend it enough. Fell absolutely in love with it. Um, sadly, LaVon Helm would die less than a year after this performance, but it's an incredible epitaph, you know, to his career. And like I say, he doesn't sing that much on it, but he does, you know, provide his incredible drum performance. And while Robbie Robertson was the intellectual force behind the band, I always felt that LaVon Helm was its heart and soul. And he brought that home at the end of his life, you know, with these midnight ramble sessions that he hosted. And he did several stellar albums, uh, solo albums there, you know, right before the end. So, um, like I say, he was the heart and soul of the band. And it, it comes through on this and some of the other things that he did with these midnight ramble sessions. But can't recommend it enough. If you love gospel, if you love R&B, if you love soul, if you love driving music with a horn section, uh, there are dual guitarists on here that just shine on a lot of the cuts. Great music. Can't recommend it enough. And Dave, you've listened to this one? I did. Probably not enough. Uh, it comes in at about 55 minutes. So it's, it's a pretty, you know, ample 
uh, offering here and uh, maybe not quite two times through. However, you know, how, how can you not like Mavis Staples? I mean, you know, she comes from the, you know, a long line of iconic <clears throat> church-based gospel singers. I think she's, I believe she's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She's, <clears throat> you know, I, I mean, I think you can put her right next to Aretha Franklin and all that. And uh, yeah, this is, this album is very tilted to gospel style music and in the brass and, and uh, just her, her really powerful vocals carry the day. Yeah. I, I know on the album, it says Mavis Staples and Weave on Helm, but yeah, as Bob said, this is uh, Mavis Staples. She, she is out front and center with her vocals, uh, you know, strong as ever. And, and I, I guess at the time she was, getting to be either close to in her 70s, as I think uh, Yvonne Helm was. Um, I, I saw one uh, video uh, from this uh, uh, recording and, you know, Yvonne, in fact, it was, uh, <clears throat> I think it was when they did the wait uh, at, at, at Woodstock there. And um, you can tell he, you know, he looked a little gaunt, but you know, the vocal was, was not what it was, but I mean, my gosh, you know, it's still, you, you could tell that this, not only was it a, a musical uh, collaboration, I, I think this is a celebration of their friendship too, uh, which went back a number, well, all the way back to the last waltz. This uh, album is in terms of, I call it with the brass, uh, the gospel and heavy stuff, it's, it's a, to use the word, it's, it's kind of a fat, uh, bluesy, just big gospel album. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is my country, which uh, Bob mentioned earlier, um, written by uh, Curtis Mayfield, recorded with the, with the impressions. And yeah, it's not out of date at all for, you know, various reasons that a couple that Bob mentioned. And um, uh, there's one acapella in here, which uh, kind of, uh, I shouldn't be surprised given it's uh, uh, Mavis Staples. And I believe uh, Levon Helm's daughter was singing. Uh, she was part mm -hmm. of his band in this big uh, onstage collaboration called Far Farther Along. And it was just, <laughs> I, I just think it was very, uh, to me, just really memorable. Uh, couple of the other uh the covers uh <clears throat> when they did uh dylan's you got to serve somebody i i think this is i haven't heard too many other renditions of this dylan tune but boy i th i think it really it, it's it's a solid uh you know it's a, a little bit kind of funky in there but i th i think it's a great just a great rendition of, of dylan's tune um, let's see, Larry, let's see, Larry Campbell, who was guitarist, I, I think for, <clears throat> I believe for Weave on Helm, uh, wrote When I Go Away, which is another big band kind of flavored, uh, tune and, uh, big band gospel number. And it's all there. I mean, I mean, uh, if, if you like our if you're not even familiar with gospel style music, I would say check out this album. Uh, check out uh, <clears throat> who Mavis Staples is if you haven't listened to her before. I don't know how you haven't heard of her, but uh, not much more to add what Bob uh, covered from A to Z, but her, I think her delivery in this just naturally, it, it just didn't carry the moment. It's, she kind of stole the show. and. Uh, but Levon, you know, uh, got a Granum. He, he got in his drumming licks. And uh, you, you can tell, at least from the video that I saw, they just very much uh, just really had a, a great close relationship uh, musically and on a personal level. So, um, yeah, I, I don't see how anyone would not like this album. It, it's just, uh, if you're not a fan of the genre, Still, it's uh, 
I, I think it can be uplifting even to a naysayer. Well, okay. Well, thanks for that, guys. Appreciate that review. That's uh, that's an album that uh, that probably has escaped a lot of folks' notice. So we're happy to let everybody know that it's out there. So, yep. So go check it out. Uh, thanks, gentlemen. Uh, and thanks, everybody, for listening to us. We'll be back with uh, another Geezerology Roundtable next Tuesday. Uh, next Friday, we'll have a couple of uh, one more review coming up as we do pretty much every Friday. And uh, yeah, check us out at uh, www.geezerology.com. Bob and I have a blog over there that, uh, that we used to work on a lot more than we do now, but, uh, but it's still there. We still drop something up there every now and then. And, uh, yep. And, and, uh, uh, please hit the subscribe button and keep up with what we're doing on, uh, on YouTube. Thanks everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later. So long. Mm -hmm.